Who are the news media today? Who are we talking about? Well, I think some of our previous panels talked about the, the democratization of journalism and media and, and information. And I, I feel like I'm here to also represent, there are good things about the internet still, right? It's not all bad news. Um, and it is a great platform, as was said, for speech of all kinds, for the individual, for the dissident, for the individual blogger. But that is also a challenge that folks online can't tell the difference anymore between what is a legitimate, well-researched, verified news source and Joe's blog. Right, so right. the New York everything Times looks the same. Look, everything looks Facebook the same on feed. on Facebook, on in font size, etc. And and this is the disruption of journalism, as we've seen tech disrupt everything from taxis to you know music and movies. And we've got to figure out what's right and fair, both for the legitimate media and and journalists, as well as for the consumers of information in a democracy. Facebook had a big announcement last week that it was going to de-emphasize publisher content. Um, and some people were up in arms about that. Jay, you said that's going to be a good thing for publishers in your yeah. counterintuitive Well, it's way. going to be Tell a good why. thing in the same way that when you finally realize that this relationship isn't working and you get out of it, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> um, and so I, I think um, producers of news can finally look at this Goliath, Facebook, and realize that it really has a kind of a majestic indifference to the fortunes of the news industry. Right. Doesn't really care about news. News is a fraction of the total game for Facebook, maybe 5%, at most 10%, probably more like 3 or 4% of, of Facebook is news. And so it's... Sorry, that smaller percentage is... It, the traffic is, that is due to news? Or yeah, that engagement? would be the items in the news feed, uh -huh. right? Um, and, uh, and so it's better for the producers of news to have um, an unsentimental and kind of hard-edged, realistic view of this uh, Goliath. Now, if people in newsrooms can figure out how to use Facebook to get more attention to their work, to also put themselves in front of people, a fraction of whom might become subscribers or supporters, right. then that's good. They should continue to learn how to do that. But they should not feel that there's any partnership here, that there's any relationship here. Um, it's like any other big, giant, powerful force in society. You have to work out the terms of your relationship to it. Craig, how do you feel like that the news media is dealing with Facebook in terms of um, where are they in that arc of understanding? Uh, well, I think there's different tiers is one thing. Like a, a good example of that is Campbell Brown is a former journalist, is the head of journalism partnerships for Facebook. And on the day that they announced that they were basically, you know, telling news organizations expect less reach, expect, expect less from your pages on Facebook, <clears throat> she sent out an email to a select group of publishers that I was able to get a copy of. Uh, and so I think there's a tier of really top tier publishers like The Post, like The New York Times, um, you know, some conservative publishers, other folks like that. BuzzFeed was on this list as well, who they continue to have business relationships with. And I think they will always continue to have that. But I, I think the thing, the group that I worry about most, who now have to have a hard realization, one are kind of smaller, what we might call long tail publishers, who maybe have more niche audiences or just a smaller audience, and they've been trying to, you know, get more traffic from Facebook, but now they may get crushed in this. And the other group would be the really bad actors, the people who, you know, walk up to the line of what's allowed and go over it as well, who I think this is really what Facebook, I think this is who Facebook is actually targeting, is the kind of outlying publications, the smaller ones the spammers, the scammers, the people spreading false information. I think this is like a shot across their bow, frankly, more than it is for big organizations. And I've been watching a group of, I guess it's about 50 pages that I've set up in different categories for weeks now. Facebook said actually these changes started to roll out in early January, and I haven't seen anything yet. So I don't, I don't actually know what's going to happen. It may be a whole bunch of freaking out for nothing, to be honest. Mm. What do you mean you haven't seen anything yet? I haven't seen massive uh, drop-offs or even a trend towards drop-offs for the uh, reach of these pages. And it, like, a, there's a really important distinction to what Facebook has announced. They've told you that your page will probably show up less in the news feed. It will get less engagement. However, if your stuff is actually being shared by people individually on their own profiles, that may actually give you the same or even more reach. 
So we don't actually know how that dynamic's gonna play out, but I haven't seen a trend towards people starting to crater yet. And this is from mainstream news to really kind of viral news outfits. That would be our non-news operation at BuzzFeed, for example. And, and places that I consider really marginal publishers that are like spammy and scammy, nobody's really taken a hit yet.